So, you've got your Cambridge Maths interview coming up, one of the biggest events of your life, and you're probably sat there wondering, how do I not completely mess this up? Well, good news, you're not alone. Today I'm going to be breaking down everything you need to know about smashing your Cambridge Maths interview, from preparation tips to mindset hacks, so you can walk in there with confidence and come out feeling like a mathematician in the making. I also have a few resources at the end of the video that should help you with your interviews, so stick around for them, or if it's easier just get to the end, I'm not going to judge. Maybe a little bit. So why are Cambridge interviews unique? First off, Cambridge interviews aren't like your typical school tests. They're less about what you know and more about how you think. The interviewers want to see your thought process, how you approach different problems and how you can actually handle being stuck. Think of it more of as a collaborative math session where you're working with the interviewer rather than a grilling interrogation. Okay, so what exactly are the interviewers looking for? Well, number one, problem solving skills. Can you think about these problems that they set and create some ideas and tests to see if you can make any progress on it? Number two, mathematical creativity. How can you take familiar concepts and apply them to a completely new problem? How can you blend topics that you've, n you've never blended before, such like trigonometry and statistics, and what new ideas come with that? Number three, your ability to learn new concepts from your interviewers. They might teach you something relatively simple and ask you to apply it to a new problem that you've not seen before. So that they're wondering how easily you can learn something new. And lastly, number four, your ability to communicate your ideas back to your interviewers. This is a really useful skill, not just for the interview, but for degree level and beyond. You need to be able to explain your ideas clearly and concisely. To take the pressure off a little bit, they don't actually want you to get everything right. They just want to see how you learn from them. They're not expecting you to be the next Ramanujan, at least not yet. They just want to see what your potential is for mathematics. So what actually did my interview consist of? Well, when I interviewed at Churchill College, the process began the evening before, where I arrived at college and at around 8pm, pretty alert, took part in a multiple choice exam alongside around 30 other students. The test consisted of 40 multiple choice questions, but you weren't expected to solve them all. It was more designed to stretch your thinking and gauge how you approach problems. The next morning, bright and early, woke up and it was mostly a waiting game. All the interviewees, myself included, were gathered in a couple of rooms just to relax, chat, and of course, stress over every life decision that got me to that point. It was a lot of nerves and anticipation as I waited for my interview. Now, there were two types of interviews, each with a very distinct format and purpose. We didn't have both, you either had one or the other. So the first type, the one I didn't actually have, was a paper review interview. So in this session, you reviewed your answers from the previous evening's tests, and the focus was on the tougher ones, the ones you didn't get right, and the, just the ones you didn't attempt. So it's definitely worth the night before reflecting on your answers that you gave to the test, so you're prepared for when you go into that interview. So the second type, the one I actually had, was an unfamiliar topics interview. So it was a deep dive into something completely new, questions I'd never encountered before. They started off pretty simple, but quickly became more and more challenging, often beyond my depth. But the purpose here isn't to see if you can solve everything, but it's to observe how you think, how you communicate your understanding, and how you react to the hints that they give you. During the whole interview, the interviews are giving you guidance to help you progress. It was crucial to think deeply about the hints that they're giving you, and use them to move forward because that's how they will teach you your degree. So that's, that's the idea that they're looking for. Interestingly enough though, neither interview heavily focused on my personal statement or any of my extracurricular activities. In my interview, there was like a brief five minute period where we talked about some of the things that I'd written down on my personal statement, but it wasn't in any detail or wasn't a central part of the interview. If you do have an interview that they've told you centers on your personal statement, just try and be genuine and be prepared to discuss some of the amazing things that you've written down on your personal statement. My experience aligns closely with other people that I've spoken to, but the specific format of the interviews might slightly change depending on your college or the course you're applying for. As a little bit of a note here, since COVID, most of the interviews are now done online. So the process might be a little bit different, but the ideas and the format should be very similar. So all the advice I gave should still be very relevant. Now let's talk prep. The best way to prepare is by practicing the right kind of questions. Cambridge questions tend to be very open-ended and very exploratory. 
like the step problems. So if you've already been preparing for step, you're on the right track. Now, the best thing you can do is go through some difficult step problems and write your reasoning out clearly and logically. Get someone who understands maths to read it and see if they can, with a quick glimpse, understand what you've done. Now, if you want more advice on writing, have a look at the video, which should be around here somewhere, um, where I go into detail about how to write like a mathematician. This will help you get more marks and impress your interviewers. Okay, so what are the top resources to help you prepare? Well, number one is past interview questions. You can check some online forums. There's loads of online that you can try and practice with. Number two, step and MAT problems. These are really good because it's similar style questions to what you'll get in the interview. Number three, Olympiad style questions. So that's the pink kangaroo, the BMO style questions. And number four is online, you can generally find some links to filmed interviews. Now, some of these interviews are a little bit old, but the format's still the same. Have a watch and kind of get an idea what a Cambridge Maths interview looks like. I'll link one below. One of the best preparation tips I can give you is to practice explaining your reasoning out loud, whether you want to record yourself or better yet, grab a friend, parent, and have them play the role of the interviewer. It's really difficult at first, it'll be really awkward, but you'll be amazed at how much clearer your thoughts get when you're trying to articulate them. As another tip, you should be willing to chat with people who finish their interview. They may give you some hints as to what the questions involve. This can help you prepare. As for my interview, everyone got the exact same questions. So since I had some hints about the questions and a few tips before I went in, I could do a bit of prep. All right, so you've practiced some questions, you've done the test the evening before, and now you're in the room. First thing to think of is take your time. Pause to think, and don't panic if you're stuck. Don't rush into the problem. Think about the steps that you're gonna do before you even start. And better yet, write out the process that you're gonna try. It'll get your bonus marks with the interviewer. Number two, speak your thoughts. Even if you're unsure about what to do, share what you're considering. Talk about what your plan is, what you think will work and why it'll work, and also what you don't think will work and why you think it won't work. Number three is be flexible. If the interviewer suggests a new approach, run with it. And if you have any follow-up questions on the hints they've given you, just ask them. Treat it as though you're with a teacher and that they're trying to teach you something new and you're trying to actually learn from them. And then take what they teach you and apply it to the problem. The interviewers aren't looking for perfection. They're looking for curiosity and resilience. If you get stuck, don't just freeze. Instead say, I'm not sure what to do, but I'd try this. That shows them that you're willing to explore and learn new things from them. Now let's talk about the mental game. It's easy to psych yourself out thinking, everyone else here is a genius, especially when they're all talking about all the awards they've won and all the courses they've been on. Imposter syndrome here is a big thing. I was so stressed, but what I found was that all those students who talked a big game assumed that they would go into the interview and nail every question. But what they found was that when they went in, they couldn't answer any of the questions. So just remember, the interview isn't about comparing you to Einstein. It's about your unique way of thinking. Treat it as a conversation, not an exam. They understand that you're going to be nervous, they know that, but try and just talk so that they understand your thought process and that way they can still see through your nervousness. Focus on enjoying the challenge so that you have a passion and an interest for maths. They're gonna see your enthusiasm for maths, especially when you're struggling and think, ah, this person has a real resilience and keen interest. So we think they'll do well during their degree and masters and onwards. Celebrate the small wins by like spotting a new approach or cracking a new problem. Then ask questions about it. Are there any other things that you can do with this new method? Are there any applications for these topics? Try to seem keen, but don't try and force it. If you don't have any questions, they'll be able to tell if it's fake. And remember, even if you don't solve the problems, showing that you can make some progress or adapt to the hints that they give you is often just as impressive. Don't be too caught up with the fact that you've struggled. Thinking back, I'm not even sure I solved a single question straight away. Now for the little surprise that I promised at the start of the video. In fact, there's two. So for the first one, I'm gonna be putting together all the questions that I had for my interview, and I'm gonna be sending this out. So if you'd like to get them, please sign up to the email list that's linked in the description. And for the second one, I'm gonna be doing some mock interviews. So again, if you'd like a mock interview, please subscribe and fill in the sign up form in the description, and I'll be in touch with some more details. Look, overall, the Cambridge Maths interview is incredibly challenging but it's also an opportunity for you to show off your love for maths. Think about it this way. You're talking to one of the brightest mathematicians in the world. 
You love maths, they love maths. Just show them who you are and what you can do. Prepare well, stay curious, and most importantly, try and enjoy the process. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more maths tips and tricks. And let me know in the comments, what's your biggest worry about the Cambridge interview? I can try and help. Thanks again. See you in the next one.